The modern recovery industry has well-equipped, well-trained and highly dedicated technicians. But, despite all the training and the equipment, mistakes can be made. Now, the point of this program is to show you a number of incidents and the best possible way of dealing with them. Now, if you're used to handling heavy kit like this, a few extra tons here or there, might not seem to make too much difference. Until, that is, it all comes crashing down on your head. And then you've got not only the risk of serious injury or worse, can you imagine the effect on your family if you could never work again? Now, of course, in order to work safely, you need the right equipment. And what we've done here is to lay out the amazing range of kit that recovery vehicles like this need to carry. Now, some of it, of course, is obvious. Things like forks, snatch blocks, shackles, airline connectors, and even granules for soaking up diesel and oil spills light boards, safety helmets, even down to driver's maps and manuals, all contained in an inventory like this. And safety standards, of course, are being raised all the time. This is the revised reflective safety jacket in orange and yellow. Now, in the same way that wearing green means you're a paramedic, wearing yellow and orange means that everyone at the incident can readily identify you as a vehicle recovery technician. And that gives you a much more professional image. Having the right equipment is vital, but knowing how to use it safely is just as important, as is regularly maintaining and checking all this gear. Now, this program can't be a substitute for formal training, but what it can do is identify some situations that could arise and hopefully help you to work more safely at the roadside. All the vehicles that you'll see in this program comply to current legislation standards, and we presume that yours does too. Now, over the last few years, there's been an increasing emphasis on road safety in general and the safety of the recovery industry in particular. One of the people spearheading that campaign has been Superintendent Dave Withy, who's director of the Central Motorway Police Group. This video, the third in the series, together with the codes of practice, will make a significant contribution to safety in the vehicle recovery industry and to those engaged in tyre replacement at the roadside. The equipment and recovery techniques that you will see will demonstrate best industry practice and if used as part of a training programme will help to cut the risks and dangers to people employed at the roadside in the service of others. I would commend it to you. By the end of this programme, you'll realise how many situations there are where accidents can happen. Now, out there in the real world, people will put pressure on you to cut corners, and the danger is that you'll succumb, even though your training should have taught you to know better. Now, it's vital you don't succumb to that sort of pressure and relax your concentration, even for a second. We've used actors to help us tell the stories of real-life incidents. In my case, I, I just wasn't thinking. I pulled into the customer's yard and I didn't notice the slope. I disconnected everything, lowered the casualty vehicle down and it rolled forward, pushing me into the back of the recovery truck. Fortunately, I wasn't too badly hurt. I know I'm dealing with heavy trucks and big pieces of equipment, but you get used to it. It just becomes part of your life. Well, until something goes wrong and then you realise there's tons of metal involved and it could be coming straight towards you. I know it's dangerous out there. Everybody realises this, even the simplest of things, the things you do every day. But it's not until you have an accident yourself that it really comes home. You don't really think about it. But I realise now that you should. It's careful planning that makes all the difference between a safe recovery or a dangerous situation. Once you know how you're going to deal with the problem, you're well on the way to solving it. And you're the expert. No one else knows as well as you how to do your job. With a complex recovery like this, you need to make sure that everyone knows exactly what the recovery plan is. Five minutes planning now could save a lot of time later. And during all of that time, a queue of traffic will be building up. At peak times, a mile of traffic can build up in three or four minutes. 
You should also be aware that in the heat of the moment, often the basics get overlooked. And one of those basics is communication. In this case, you need to be extra careful because as soon as you start to right the Arctic, the load is going to shift and change the centre of gravity. To control the descent, you need another recovery vehicle to restrain it from the other side. This situation is good use of a twin boom unit since you can winch over the side and you only need to take up one lane of the road. Use the power winch to lower the booms before you pull out the winch ropes. If you pull out the winch ropes first, you'll end up using the winch handle to lower the booms, and that can be dangerous. Always be especially careful about the winch handles. A runaway winch handle is a killer. When you part the booms, you need to be careful if you're on a slope. The booms can swing out sideways as you split them, which is especially dangerous if they swing out into the traffic. Air cushions and high-pressure mats are very strong, but they're vulnerable if they're used incorrectly. If they're in contact with jagged metal or a very hot or very cold surface, they can deflate, and spilt chemicals could eat into the material. So don't just rely on an air cushion to support the vehicle. The principle is always to assess the risk and never get underneath anything in case it fails. Using a strop rather than a winch rope prevents you causing more damage to the casualty when you start to lift. With my accident, oh, I should never have put my arm under there. I still can't believe I did it. I did know better. I just didn't think. Make sure you're working together as an effective team. You should use lights when it's dark so you can each see what the other is doing. Always remember to clean and check the air cushions and high pressure mats visually for defects after they've been used. Your aim should be to prevent damage, for example by using pieces of conveyor belt rubber. The sight of a fully loaded Arctic rising on air cushions and lowering gently onto its wheels is impressive. When you've seen it a few times, it's easy to take for granted. The full technicalities of doing the job are beyond the scope of this programme. For example, there are a very large number of situations to do with the different types of braking and transmission systems on vehicles. But whatever the recovery involves, you have to carry on working safely and professionally, even when circumstances put you under extreme pressure, especially if there's somebody trapped in the wreckage. Even though this has now turned into the most straightforward of recoveries, it still has its dangers. Everything must be thought through. Although you can't compromise on safety, you do have to remember that in many ways you're providing a service to the public by clearing the highway. It's an important job you're doing. Whatever you're towing, you should always fit a safety chain. Take care that air hoses aren't kinked, and if they're fitted with taps, make sure they're open. Otherwise, the brakes won't work correctly and could cause a serious problem. The vehicle you're towing also needs lights, either by connecting them directly to the recovery vehicle or by using a light board. Always ensure you have the recovery vehicle's registration number on the rear of the casualty vehicle. On a busy motorway or dual carriageway, by this stage, the tailback of traffic could be several miles long. You need to clear the carriageway quickly and efficiently and liaise with the police to let them know that you've finished the job and that you've removed all your equipment. With powerful equipment, even the heaviest job becomes easy, but it's the way you tackle the job that's so important. Always plan ahead. It's important that every member of the team knows what's going to happen next. You must concentrate at all times. Some recoveries need special care. Coaches have such a light construction that lifting them in the wrong way can cause thousands of pounds worth of damage. 
a safe way is to lift it on the wheels. There's no strength in the chassis, so lifting it anywhere else could cause damage. In fact, most modern coaches don't even have a full chassis. One of the best ways to recover a modern coach safely and without damage is to use a three-stage telescopic underlift with a low-profile boom and adjustable wheel grids. Trying to cut corners is not an option when you're dealing with a coach that costs upwards of £200,000. Besides damage to the body, one of the first things that can happen if you don't lift correctly from the wheels is that the windows could crack as the coach flexes. A similar thing can happen if you're lifting a loaded truck. In those circumstances, the danger is that you bend the chassis just behind the cab. As with any recovery, there's a lot of things to remember. It's the attention to detail that makes all the difference between a safe recovery and a dangerous situation. And make sure you take all of your equipment with you, including the cones. But lifting from the wheels means you can have a long overhang, especially with a coach. The front or rear protrudes a long way when you go around a corner. It's easy to forget just how much room you need to the side. You need to position yourself carefully on the road to make sure you have enough clearance. In other ways, a coach is just the same as any other recovery. For example, once you've gone a few miles, you need to check that everything's settled down and it's still held securely in the wheel grids. Lift a coach on its wheels and there should be no problem. But this is what happens to a coach when you lift without using the wheels. The windows may crack and at the same time, the body of the coach could be damaged. And when you're lifting a truck with a rigid chassis, it's always safer to lift from the front axle. If the truck's loaded, there's an even greater chance of damaging it if you don't follow the correct procedures. Always try to lift from the axle or the wheels to avoid bending the chassis. Be very careful of the overhang at the front on corners. And after a few miles, check your load is still secure. No matter how difficult the recovery, it's still possible to work safely. In this situation, when you need to winch a heavy load, it's very tempting just to work on experience and a rule of thumb. Assessing the situation and thinking it through applies just as much here as anywhere else. In this situation, first, you need to assess the total weight of the vehicle. It's safer to assume that if a vehicle is loaded, it's loaded to its full maximum laden weight. A good starting point for calculating the total weight of the vehicle is to check the manufacturer's plate. In addition to this, always build in a safety margin. Then you need to consider the rolling resistance. That will be increased by the soft ground. There'll be extra resistance because an axle could be damaged and you're winching uphill so the gradient will have an effect. The way to calculate the gradient resistance, the rolling resistance and the damage resistance is explained fully by the Institute of Vehicle Recovery in their course notes. This is an example of an area where a course of training is absolutely essential. For safety's sake, you must calculate the load as carefully as you can. The calculations will never be exact, but they're a lot safer than trusting your intuition. For this recovery, you'll certainly need both winches. As it turns out, snatch blocks were needed to make sure the load was within the capabilities of the winch ropes. If you've ever seen a winch rope or a chain brake, it's frightening. You're just hoping it's not coming your way. It missed me by inches, hit the back of the truck. Could have taken my head off. Once snatch blocks were used, it was possible to make a safe recovery that was well within the capabilities of the winch ropes and the winches themselves. 
always calculate the safe working load as carefully as you can and think through exactly how you're going to use your winches and snatch blocks. Even the simplest repair at the side of a motorway, or any other road for that matter, is extremely dangerous. You need to be on your guard at all times. In the past, many accidents have happened to tyre technicians, especially when they're working on the offside. The safest way is always to move smoothly onto the hard shoulder in plenty of time and park three to four car lengths behind. Turn your wheels to the left so that if your recovery vehicle is hit by a passing vehicle, it won't run straight into the back of the casualty vehicle you're working on, but it will curve away where it's less likely to do any harm. On busy stretches of the motorway, if you have to work on the offside, always inform the police. If they have the resources, they may attend and cone off a lane of the motorway for you. Hello driver, yes, you want cover for a tyre change, do you? Breakdown concerns uh, wheel change on the offside. We have a patrol available, should be with you in about ten minutes. If you could stay well clear of the traffic and do not start your work until the patrol arrives. When he gets there, he'll cone out lane one to provide you with some cover and we'll also set some signals to protect the rear of the scene. Mike Alpha, Oscar Tango 26. Oscar Tango 26, go ahead of her. Oscar Tango 26, yes, can I have a lane one closure, please, at gantry 7029A Alpha? Roger, a lane one closure to cover 3 bleak 0 M5 South. 26, your lane one closure is set. Although the police are doing everything they can to make this a safe environment, you still have a duty to make sure the customer is in a safe place and stays there. And you need to be seen at all times. That means clean, reflective clothing for you and reflective strips on the inside of the rear doors and tailgate of your vehicle. Don't let the safety zone lull you into a false sense of security. The less time you spend on the offside of any vehicle, the better. Even when you're on the hard shoulder, stay as far away from the traffic as possible. I think over the years it's got more dangerous, well, especially since there's more traffic. You've got to think about safety all the time. It's as easy to get into good habits as it is into bad ones. Clear up any debris on the hard shoulder before you leave, but remember, a shredded tyre can severely injure your hands unless you wear safety gloves. You need to be conscious of safety right up to the final moments of the job. On busy motorways and dual carriageways, don't be impatient. Wait for a safe gap before you rejoin the carriageway and watch for obstacles ahead of you as you pick up speed on the hard shoulder. Always remember the safety procedure when you park. And keep all offside vehicle working to a minimum. Let's go back to that motorway incident we saw at the beginning of the programme. It's a complex recovery job and it also has the potential for creating major disruption to the motorway network. Let's see how that incident originally happened. your burst tyre in the middle of the road? Yeah, well, I'm not going to fetch it. Me neither. And we've got to let the police know that it's there. Funny thing is, an EMS happened to him made a couple of weeks ago. He wasn't really hurt, just gave him a bit of a fright. As a matter of fact, it's made me a lot more careful as well. Motorway control, PC Smith. Hello. Yes, yeah, so I want to report a burst tyre on the motorway near Junction 13. Safety isn't something you talk about, 
It's something you do every minute of every day. When you get an accident that creates all that chaos and confusion, not to mention the risk of serious injuries or fatalities, guess who's got to turn out and clear up the mess, irrespective of the weather conditions or the time of night? You are. Good luck.